see you. Hiding out. Pardon me? I'm hiding out. You're hiding out. Well, it's nice to see you. I'm most grateful for you joining me today and your willingness to have a chat and uh, others could look in on and, uh, and, and perhaps and very likely glean some insights uh, and uh, some resonances as to where they're at, perhaps in their own world of change and transition and, uh, you know, and the challenges and choices that come with all of that. And uh, so, yes, I'm, I'm most grateful for you being here and offering your time. Perhaps as a, as a starting point, you could maybe tell the viewer and the listener a little bit about yourself, whatever you're comfortable sharing. I I know and love all these dimensions of who you are, but I'll let you decide what you uh, would like to share by way of an introduction. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing I want to say is thanks very much for thinking of me. Um, the 100 Day Shift program and the work we did together has meant a lot to me. And uh, I really relish the opportunity to share that with other people who are considering it. Um, and other programs that you might be offering. So thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, just a little about myself. I'm, uh, I think I'm 62. I'm not 100% sure, I keep forgetting. I don't pay much attention anymore, but I think I'm 62. And I've been self-employed for a number of years with various uh, entrepreneurial enterprises uh, con communications consulting firm, uh, publishing company, uh, book publishing company, um, communications consulting, I think I mentioned that, and also has, have been doing a lot of work as an editor and an author uh, since I closed down my publishing company. So I've been a writer my whole life of, you know, as you know, of everything there is to write from annual reports to music. So, you know, uh, writing is it for me. It's what runs in my blood. And um, I think when I first started thinking about the program and talking with you about it over a period of time, I wasn't really sure what was blocking me. And uh, so it was, a, it was a real difficult time in my life. There were a lot of things going on in my world. And, you know, personal as well as professional. So it was a great opportunity uh, for me to just stop moving and think more uh, purposefully about what I was doing and where I was going. And, and it was a really, really good time for me to, for that to happen. And, you know, things happen when they're meant to. I may not have appreciated it as much if I was in a different period of life. Um, but this just seemed to be at the right time for me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's a that's a nice backdrop for our conversation. Um. So. So we, you know, those those who have embarked on this work with me have have reached a threshold where they have they have decided that bringing in someone from the outside of their lives more into the interior of the lives is, is timely. And um, I, I uphold the significance of those sorts of choices. You know, and uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you might provide a comment on, you know, that, that choice point and, and, and what entered into uh, the decision that you made. Right. Well, for me now, it's been a couple of years since I went through that program. So um, I, I did go back and look at some of my materials to refresh myself and, uh, you know, just prepare a little bit for that for this conversation. And I, I, I was again, amazed at, uh, at everything I learned and felt and did and acted upon and and how it changed me. But to go back to the original decision point, you know, I, as I mentioned, I was at loose ends with a number of different things in life and trying to figure out uh, really what was causing me not to be able to move forward with the things that were most important to me. And, um, not surprisingly, since my issue was around money-making, um, 
the issue of making a decision to pay for something like this without knowing if it would, yeah. you know, uh, help me or not, or, you know, or, or how, how it would help me, you know, it requires a leap of faith. And I think that I was at a point in my life where I had figured out pretty clearly that the way I was doing things was not working. <laughs> so um, I needed inspiration and I needed a different perspective and I needed, uh, I have always needed, I, I am a, a, a suff, uh, I wouldn't call it a sufferer, but I, I am a, I live with attention deficit disorder to an extreme degree. And so one thing that was really important to me was the fact that you were able to describe this program in great detail and, and, and it was very clearly laid out. And for somebody like me, that's really important. Um, if I feel things are too vague or too broad, I can't get a handle on it. And so that was something that helped me make the decision was that I saw a very clear structure, steps, uh, work that we would do together, work I would do on my own, and, and it made a lot of sense to me, and that improved my confidence level. Also, you know, uh, you and I had 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 lots of conversations before that, and I had come to know you as somebody with a lot of natural gifts that also contributed to my confidence level. And so I think the, the combination of you know, feeling that there was a very strong program in place, that you were a very strong facilitator and somebody I trusted, and the point at life that I was at, that I just felt uh, I really needed to shake things up somehow, and this opportunity was presented to me. So I would say it was all three of those things. Yeah, thank you. Uh, interesting how you point out the intersections of different dimensions of your experience. Uh, you know, only one of which is, is me and what I do and, and how that, you know, is, is fertile ground, shall I say, for um, moving forward into, you know, what is a, a co-creative experience together over a, over a meaningful duration of time. Um, let me say one more thing yeah. in addition that, that sparked for me when you said that. The, the, uh, I, and, I, and I will just share this a little more openly because I, I think it's so critical to my particular story is that I was involved in a 12-step program at the time. And one thing that could have held me back was my concern that this would in some way detract from or conflict with my 12-step work, which was very, very important to me as well, which I was just starting at the time. And again, taking that leap of faith, um, what I discovered was that the values base and the, philo the philosophical base that you work from is so naturally uh, complementary to and yet distinct from the work I was doing with the 12-step program that it, it just strengthened both for me to be able to do them in parallel path, uh, slightly different fo focuses. And I realize the actual plural of that is foci, but anyway, <laughs> it's just right. too weird of a word. Um, <laughs> I'm an editor. I can make that decision. I'm not going to use that word, even though it's the right word. I love it. Um, yeah. So, so I, that's a, that's really important for me to say because, you know, let's be honest, there are millions and millions of people in our society who are, you know, facing issues with addictions themselves or with addictions with loved ones and are, are that's a big part of what is, is working in them to try and, and get themselves moving forward. Right. And so, uh, so it was a great relief to me. And I became very excited, in fact, about the fact that they were complementary programs. And I think that you'll, you'll recall a number of times when I said, this reminds me so much of X in step six or whatever. And 
um, it was, I made those connections and it was very powerful. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you sharing that. I, there's elements of, of, of what you just shared that I didn't know about. And um, I'm, I'm glad, I, I'm, first of all, I'm glad to learn a new dimension in your experience, of course, and, and to learn that um, it was complimentary. And what you brought, who you are and what you brought enhances the experience given the co-creative nature of this. And, and so it's, it's both of us bringing, you know, as, uh, as much of our own truth as we have access to at that particular point in time into um, this, un this unfolding experience. So that's uh, lovely that you would share that. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. And I just feel like it's important because it is, uh, it's such a big thing in a lot of people's lives. And uh, if I can help, help people feel more comfortable that this is not going to, you know, create any disconnects for them. And in fact, they might find it to be a very powerful parallel experience that then I'm happy to do that. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say Oh yes, when you said the co-creative experience and what I brought to it. The other thing that I, I really felt was a contributor to the success of the program for me was the fact that I was required to work. I wasn't able to just sit back and listen to all of the wisdom that you presented and there was lots of that and, and look at the materials. I was required to contribute to my own growth. I had to think hard. I had to dig deep. I had to do some work. I had to prepare and, and I had to take responsibility for myself. And uh, given that my particular issue was surround, my blockage was surrounding my perspective and views on finances and money, that was really important for me as a bigger part of the whole thing. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you have emphasized that, that uh, yeah, this isn't, um, this isn't something that just happens for you or to you. It's something that you happen to alongside, you know, my, my doing everything I can, bringing everything I can in terms of my experience uh, into, into our relationship. And yeah, I mean, if, if we want to nurse and nurture out of us what is higher and truer, then we're gonna have to go into the corners. <laughs> Uh, there's there's some tough slugging and and how many times did we talk about the dark corners? Oh, <laughs> yes, and there's so much beautiful light there um, once we once we navigate the natural innate fears that we each have of of those those dark spaces and uh, it, it's so wonderful that this is coming up and and uh, in the conversation and, and the organic nature of this allows for it. So I appreciate that because when any rose colored glasses need, need to be, um, you know, we, we want to have them on it sometimes and it's okay to have them on it sometimes, but other times we really just need to take, take those puppies off and, uh, and, and see the vast access points that are through some of the darker experiences of our lives. As my yoga instructor the other day said at the close of class, you know, I, um, I uphold, the darkness in me upholds the darkness of, in you. Uh, the light in me cherishes and appreciates the light in you. This was an acknowledgement that we all have both. And that's natural and that's normal. And I believe there's so many access points to light through the dark. And we can be in our light and discover that, you know, oh my goodness, I'm finding some darkness there. And Absolutely. So, so thanks for, uh, for facilitating that part of the conversation. You have um, generously already touched on um, sort of part A and part B of the during experience. Um, I'll just touch on part A for, for a moment and that is um, um, 
Any additional comments you would like to make? You've already touched on it, but any additional comments you might like to make, Suzanne, about um, structure and or process too much, too little, um, uh, more than enough, not enough, that kind of thing. And then the B part is, uh, evidently those who engage in this kind of work are gonna be, are gonna be spending a bit of time with me. And uh, <laughs> so the B part is, could you, could you maybe offer them some, some, some thoughts and feelings about uh, what they might be in for uh, in working with me? Right. Um, yes, I think I mentioned that structure was, is really important to me and uh, it also, for, for anyone else out there who experiences um, a similar uh, dis learning disorder, it's difficult to, there's two things, not enough structure is difficult and too much structure is also difficult in different ways. And so it, it can be a struggle. Um, I, if there's too much in front of me too fast, I tend to cower away from, from it. So one of the things I really liked about the program was that, that I had the overview of everything at the beginning. I knew what the path was to be, even if I didn't understand all the individual pieces. And, uh, and those were left on purpose for discovery reasons. Um, I, I felt that the material and the structure was, was, I don't know, I guess just, just right. I will, I will pick the just right door because, um, because even though there was a great structure, I would say it was a breathing structure in the sense that it allowed, you know, for life to happen. Um, I'll tell you one of the features I liked the best was the, um, and I can't remember what they were called, Murray, the, you know, where, when I could call you and we could discuss something in five minutes or less mm -hmm. when I was yes. stuck with something. That's, yeah. So in the, in the earlier part of the experience, they're checking calls and to check work the, the later part of the experience in the third trimester of the shift, those are, they take on a clearing call kind of nature. Right especially in the first part of the program, those were invaluable to me. And, um, and, and what was great about them was you were, and this maybe goes start, starts into part B is that you, you were, you, you're very good at mentorship. Um, facilitation of learning is, 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 a, is a big thing. Uh, good learning facilitators and I say this with my master's in adult education behind me, <laughs> oh, you know, it. right? Is facilitators of education, really good ones, understand that it's about the best learning happens when people discover learning for themselves. And that the role of the facilitator who, who is someone who listens well, um, asks great questions, suspends judgment, um, uh, create safe space. All of those things are very important. Provides enough educative material, enough, you know, uh, jerky to chew on that is a new flavor that the learner has somewhere to go and has a little direction. But the you know that the things that are uncovered are, are up to the learner and you're you've got that mastered you're so good at all of those things and it's rare to find all of those things in one teacher facilitator mentor trainer whatever you want to call them so that that all being said um, I really felt like you were also great at being a cheerleader I mean you were in my camp you had my back and there were a couple of situations I remember that work situations I was in at the time that before I did something <clears throat> based out of fear <laughs> uh, relating to money making as opposed to meaning making or difference making, I was able to 
call you and do a little check-in and say, okay, this is where I'm at. This is what I've got to respond to. And this is how I'm feeling, but it doesn't feel like this is the right way to respond. You, you just, in five minutes, we were able to, to, I was able to feel clear about what was a better way to handle it than the way I instinctively knew was wrong, but wasn't really sure what the right, you know, a better way was not say right and wrong, but yeah. a better way, right? I, Cause I'm trying, you know, part of this is, is learning new skills and learning different approaches to things that past approaches haven't worked for. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I would say that, you know, that part of it was really valuable to me and important. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, of course, I'm, I'm happy to hear this and uh, happy to know this was your experience. And I know I have always found it really valuable when I can reach out to a trust or the other uh, more in the moment at times, um, that can be very helpful to my, my overall clarity seeking and, uh, and it's, it's just another way to learn too right it's just another um tool for learning yeah and often yeah. We, often we we learn things in the moment we need to learn them right i'm on the edge of having to make a big decision right now right. now right. is when i need the help right yeah yeah exactly and, and just for you know the the viewer and the listener is you know it, it, it's it's as simple as this is a, is a quick text uh, in to say, you know, can I have a, can I have a check-in call or can I have a clearing call? And my commitment is that, you know, we're going to make that happen as soon as practically possible. Um, and often within the same morning or the same afternoon, certainly the same day, or if it's late, you know, in one day, you know, the AM and, uh, and then so we can get close to the moment, whatever the moment is. Um, that, you know, having a, even if it's, just, it's amazing how powerful a few minutes can even be. Oh, I appreciate no you mentioning that because that, you know, hasn't come up just as a matter of routine and in conversations with, with others. So much appreciated. Um, so anything else on the, you know, the, the A part and the B part or, or shall we move on? Um. I, you know, I don't want to get too into the technical details or weeds of, of, of all of it, but generally, I just think generally it, everything worked really, really well. And I was, uh, it was, it was just everything I thought it would be and, and definitely better than, because, because I couldn't even imagine tackling, I didn't even know when I came in what my block was. Right. So, I mean, even just, even if we'd stopped after I just discovered, this is about your historical perspective on finances and money and enoughness and all of those related surrounding issues and their connection to you and your background and history as a human. I mean, uh, that was monumental enough because it had never shown itself to me that way before. I didn't realize that that's what it was. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And and how how extraordinarily different one one's block or blocks can be from another person's block or blocks may be. And then, uh, as I often say, us humans um, will will not hurt ourselves on purpose. We just won't do that. I mean, we're just we're too intelligent. But we will hurt ourselves unconsciously all over the place. And we're so close to our own stories. Lord knows. I mean, if we ever had a chance to just, Murray, tell us about all the times when you were like unconscious and completely blocked and completely, um, your blind spots were everywhere and you couldn't access them. Oh my goodness. It's just ridiculous. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm an absurd example of how this works. It doesn't work. And, and uh, for the longest time, I, I tried to go it alone. Like I felt like I would be a better person if I just, I can navigate this. I'm an intelligent guy. I'm a creative guy. I'm a resourceful guy. I'll figure it out. And uh, my story is, you know, just a snippet is time measured in decades, spinning 
spinning on my own axis. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I don't look, I'm not a person to live with regret. I look back and I, and I realize that that's not only informed my opening, but my ability to serve better. But geez, um, we're so close to our own story that it's, it's it, how, how do you gain perspective? My dad used to say, our people have got their nose so close to the grindstone, they never get it up long enough to see all the amazing possibilities that are all around them. And I and I and I'm taking that forward. It's it's so true of my own experience and so many others uh, that I've had the, the pleasure and privilege of, of being close to. Well, you know, interestingly, <clears throat> metaphorically, I mean, that's that's the mission statement for my work, for what I do as an editor. Please elaborate. Well, I, I help people, you know, take a step back from their own closeness to their own stories. When, you know, when I'm working with authors and, and they're writing books, mm -hmm. um, it's just it's just a requirement. I mean, you know, and, and most authors are very aware of that, but, you know, certainly uh, being too close to your own story is whatever message it is that you're eager to get out in book form. And, and you know, and often, even when we're writing nonfiction, Often when we're writing nonfiction, it's still full of, uh, you know, our life, uh, right. who we are personally and professionally, and it forms our worldview and it forms, you know, our attitudes and opinions and values and beliefs and what we want to say out there in the world, which we're going to say in book form. So, you know, I, I literally live that mission, you know, helping people get their nose up away from the grindstone. Cool. I'm so glad you shared that. And, you know, <laughs> as, a, as a beautiful... It just struck me as... <laughs> Yeah. Well, but not I am. I am in fact working with Suzanne now. You know, so there was that earlier time where Suzanne engaged me and in, in a co-creative experience, and now I'm engaging Suzanne in a co-creative experience around my own authorship path. Which, um, as you say this, it's like, yeah, that's right. That's exactly the sort of things that you know. The not that I said it for that reason, Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Murray, you need to be more congruent with your own message. <laughs> I uh, love that. We're waiting on that manuscript. Yeah, that's right. It's coming. It's coming. It's very close. Um, <laughs> so as we as we wind into sort of the more the, the closing part of our conversation, it is the it's the after part. It's the as you mentioned earlier on. It's been a couple of years already. And uh, thank you so much, by the way, for going back and, and revisiting, um, you know, the uh, the evidence that the uh, the the, uh, the the path that was left behind, I suppose, uh, of our work together to refresh yourself. And, and I always find when I go back, it's just, wow, you know, there's where I was and here's where I am. And now I see just how far I've come. And so perhaps you could, you could offer some comments around, you know, what do you see in the rear view mirror, Suzanne? You know, what is, uh, you know, was that a hard stop back then, you know, What's happened since then as it relates to the work? Yeah, well, I mean, so many things that until I did go back, because we were talking earlier, who has time to stop and reflect? I know you're supposed to, but I, I often don't. And I that's why I thank you for the opportunity to do this, because it did give me the chance to stop and say, let me go back through my materials and take a look and what really happened there. And and, and it was just further proof for me and, and actually opened my eyes a bit more than I realized as to the subtle effect that the program had on me and my work with you have, has had on me. So today, and this is, I'm going to say at least two years since I finished the program, mm -hmm. right? Because it was very pre-COVID. Um, I... Uh, I had some big concerns about the fact that I had spent my whole life making a living writing, but not writing, not doing my writing. Yes. And uh, that I had helped a lot of other people write their books, but I hadn't written my books. And, and, and that my reasoning for that was that I needed to be paid for my work and you don't get paid to write your own creative work until and unless you are able to sell it to somebody and it's finished. Well, that doesn't pay the bills 
for the years it takes you to do the work, right? So my biggest problem was uh, attitudes I had about myself and what it meant to be financially responsible. And in my mind, I had to make a lot more money than I have since discovered I have to make. Um, I don't need to make that much money at all, actually. And I ha today have uh, part-time contracts that are very fulfilling in, right now I'm researching and writing a five generation family history of a family in Saskatchewan that goes back to the late 1700s for which I am also, I also have permission to, and I am now writing a script treatment for a TV series based on this true story. Cool. <laughs> right? So there's just this wonderful organic evolution of money making into meaning making into difference making, which I really believe that this, you know, if we're able, if I'm able to sell this treatment, the series will be amazing and it will have, it will make a difference to people and it will have an impact on Canadian history and British history. And, and it's, it's just really cool. And along with that and my other individual author clients that I'm working with, I have still time and energy in my life to be working on my first short story collection and my first novel. Um, I've entered a number of uh, writing contests with new work and I've won a couple of awards and I've even won some money, Murray. <laughs> Who knew? So I wouldn't say that, you know, back then I was confused and my life was completely unbalanced and today my life is completely balanced and I'm rich and I'm writing my own stuff all the time because that would not be truthful. But what I have learned is what is the appropriate balance for me and how can I connect the meaning making and the money making and the difference making and that that did not connect for me before I couldn't I didn't know the dots to connect in the first place so now I ha also have a great filter which was another great tool that you provided to me for assessing opportunities I know the filter I need to put those opportunities through in order to maintain that that carefully constructed balance and serenity that I've achieved and, and which means more to me than anything else in the world. So um, ain't nobody taken that away from me. So I still use those tools all the time. Every time I make a, a decision about a new client, I put it through the opportunity filter. Um, and it, and it's, it's got to mean something other than just be about money for me. And I often find that even things I take on that don't have any money attached to them. They, they got so many points in the difference making category that I said, yes, I'm doing this. And they led to money. No clue that they would right. when I first engaged in them or could. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really care. Mm -hmm. And it's like so many other things in life. It's like when you want to really date that boy, if you bug him and bug him and bug him, he's never going to want to date you. But if you ignore him and pretend like he's not important, he just comes running right after you. It's, <laughs> it's so amazing. How did, that, you know, how did you know that I ran after those girls like that? <laughs> <laughs> right? right? It's just, uh, it's, it's a thing. So that would be what I would say is the difference between then and now. And, and, it's, and it's significant. I hope that I hope that that's come through in, in what I've said. It's, it's a significant change in my life. And, it, and as I say, it worked together with, in parallel with another life program I've been working on and continue to work on that, that just um, has made a world of difference. And it's changed up here more than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, and uh, in here. So lovely. I mean, 
and to witness yet again your energy and your vitality, uh, even as you share your story. Um, it reminds me, and, and for those who, you know, there's, there'll be lots of insights there to gain in terms of what is this thing called the true nature and this difference making, meaning making, and money making, and all of that. And for those who, um, who, who decided to read the ebook, um, which Suzanne will be uh, combing over very shortly. <laughs> and um, editing. <laughs> it will, it, that's right. It, it will, it, it, it helps reveal exactly what you're saying, Suzanne. And that is that, you know, I, I, I carry the belief that humanity, humans, each and every one of us at our essence, are bread of light, love, and creativity. And there is this space that is available for our creativity to flourish. And life being challenging, change being challenging, and um, that space gets compromised and clogged up by all manner of, of different you know, stresses and worries and anxieties. And I mean, the list is endless as to what can compromise the space. And here I am today having this beautiful conversation with you a couple of years hence, and you are so effervescent and so um, flowing with creativity. And you're sharing some stories. And I'm really grateful that you would share some of yourself here in this latter part of the conversation as well as what you are creating. And, and, and clearly it's, it's, it's feeding you. Is that's what's possible is we all have that. We all have that. And we have things that are in the way. But once we start to you know, realize what it is that is bottlenecking and blocking and, and uh, compromising us, and we learn how we can remove them too, remove those things and, and move them out of our way, then, oh, this amazing creativity just, just flows. And, and you're, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great story. It's a beautiful vignette today of the before and the during and the after that, uh, that you know, I've had the, the pleasure and privilege of being close to this chapter of your story. There's so much that you created before our time together and there'll be so much you'll create after our time together. It's just that I had this, this unique opportunity to be close to your story during this chapter and I'm, and I'm forever grateful for that. And, and I know that uh, you know, we'll continue to co-create in many different kinds of ways from here. I certainly hope we will. And I, I just want to say, I always have to smile when you're speaking because um, one thing I, I really appreciate about you and is so rare these days in relationships with people, any kind of relationship is, I mean, there's people who talk about and will say, I see you, you know, you really do see me. You really do see me. And the, and the way I know that is, by what you say about me that I know in, in my heart barometer is accurate. You, you take the time, you think, you think with your mind, you think with your heart, and you are utterly honest and without guile in, <clears throat> excuse me, reflecting back what you see and that is so immensely supporting, supportive, and caring, and so missing in our world today. So I really want to say I appreciate you for that. A beautiful wave of emotion. Thank you. And that is the magic of the co-creative relationship. In or outside the shift, that's the magic of the co-creative relationship. Mm -hmm. So with love in my heart and gratitude for our time together. And uh, I, I'm so glad that others will have a chance to look in and, uh, and glean whatever they glean from our time together. Um, it's uh, it's uh, with generosity of spirit that you're here and you're, you're giving up your time today. So thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you.